Well, this video is going to be a little bit different, seeing as I didn't get a uh, video out in August. I don't know when I got myself married, didn't I? So anyway, I've finally taken the plunge and moved away from Adobe products for editing. So I went and bought myself a copy of DaVinci Resolve. And with that, a free editor. Nice. Not meaning to have this uh, in my workflow, but I tell you what, given a day or so with it, it's made a whole lot of difference as far as editing videos are concerned. Now I've been mucking around with this in the, in the background on some test footage and yeah, I wasn't convinced that in the outset about this thing, but now um, I can't not use it. It just blows me away. But that's not what this video is about. I'm not gonna teach you how to do editing because I have no clue myself. What I will do is discuss the quality and what this thing is and its construction and probably end up in the teardown as well. So anyway, just giving a, getting a look at what this is. For those who are familiar with uh, DaVinci Resolve, it's a, it's a uh, video editing software, primarily, I believe it's all Australian products. This is surprising to me. I only learned that a few, a few days ago when I started really diving into the background of Blackmagic. And I thought that something like this is designed if not produced in Australia. Blackmagic design actually manufacture hardware as well. Whether that's in Australia or not, I don't know. So what this is, is basically a timeline editing device uh, with anyone that's got, you know, sort of familiarity with um, how video editing works. We've got a, a shuttle or a jog wheel here, which is fairly weighted and you can zip up and down the timeline in, in your project. You can change different modes of that, um, that shuttle and jog control. You've got um, trimming and setting ins and outs and transitions and whatnot. Uh, you can play certain clips on the on the timeline with these buttons up here. You can do multi-cam arrangements. So if you're shooting from more than one cam, you can use these buttons here. But enough of what this thing does. Let's look at the quality. So look and feel. This thing is solid. It's a it's pretty weighty. Um, I haven't weighed it yet, but um, it's definitely got a quality solid feel to it, and it's more weighted to this dial so i'd imagine there's some sort of counterweight um, attached to this dial within the unit gives it a nice heavy sort of tactile well not really there's no there's no detents or anything it's completely smooth but it's definitely got some heft to it so zipping up and down the, the timeline with that the deck itself is solid there's no deck flex in this thing at all it there's no movement it's it's well put together the key feel is very um uh, soft and linear so there's no there's no obvious clicking for those familiar with the Amiga keyboards back in the uh, late 80s, 80s early, early 90s uh, very similar key feel very linear and direct and it does feel quite um, feels quality for that way uh, the back we have a USB-C connector let's get some light on here so you can see what's going on yep the USB-C connector right there uh, nothing on the other side just the same wedge shape profile okay so we'll weigh this and see how we go fair bit of heft it's like 800 grams right there that's actually everything I thought it would be so you could it's nearly a kilo's worth of uh, kit there so um, extremely impressive just do that um, those profile shots again as we go around the unit. And you can, you might notice that um, you've got a bit of a ridge all the way around. And this is meant to be, or can be, flush mounted into a desktop. So you would cut the hole out just the same size as this base uh, plastic here, and you can drop that into a dedicated editing desk so that's uh that's the intent behind that also this has uh, bluetooth functionality so you can connect to your uh, bluetooth enabled laptop or desktop i guess and use this editor completely wirelessly it does have an inbuilt battery uh, i have no idea what size that battery is or what the runtime of this thing would be but all the time you have your usb-c plugged into the back of it, it is charging the unit up for that um, wireless use whenever it uh, should arise. So with that, I think it's time to uh, stop gabbing and um, pull it down. Let's see what makes this thing tick. So I do believe there is more than the two screws that's shown in the, in the bottom here. I have had a quick look at this uh, earlier to see whether or not there's any hidden screws. And I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of discoloration in the corners here. 
where there's a bit of a contour change. So that looks like there's a screw hole underneath that rubber pad. And there is another one under this pad, and same with the other two corners, as well as these two in the middle. So I'll give you a look at that label for those playing at home. Okay, so what we'll do, I'll set up the camera elsewhere and um, we'll jump into the teardown. Actually, just before we jump into the teardown, I'm just going to place this 30 centimeter ruler down. So we're about uh, 240 millimeters wide. We're coming in at about 160 deep, I guess. And the highest point at the back is about 32, about 32 millimeters. Right, eh? so I'm actually quite fond of this little unit, so um, I don't want to destroy it, but I'm going to open up mine so uh, you don't have to. So let's get started. What I want to try and avoid is taking off these uh, rubber feet in, in its entirety, because I think we only need to expose each corner. Separating the adhesive, which is fairly, that's actually a good, good quality adhesive. I might fast forward bits of this if it gets a bit tedious, but I'm trying to do it in real time. So looking at this, Seems like there's a screw hole there. Once I actually get through the glue, which is retained on the unit. Oh, that was under my fingernail. Yeah, that wasn't pleasant. Okay, yeah, so one screw hole there. They seem to be Torx head screws. Okay, we're getting ball part. There's another one there, there we go. Well, that's good, because that means I'm not gonna destroy too much of these pads and they can actually go back without too much drama. How's that look? Yeah, done, done the same thing again. We've separated the pad off the glue and the adhesive pad has actually remained. Oh, there we go. We start to lift it now. Another Torx bit there. We've got one more. I'll just move this out of the way. So yeah, I never actually intended to get any hardware, but the software was bundled. Uh, sorry, you bought the software and the, this piece of kit was bundled with it for pretty much the same price as buying the software outright. Well, I thought, oh well, let's uh, go with that. I think the deal is actually still running at the moment. Uh, I'll just tore that pad a little bit. Oh well, minor casualty, but certainly not detrimental. In any case, we can um, put whatever rubber feet on this we like. It's not that big a deal. I'm actually making a, a mess on this one. Bear with me a tick. Just going to get something a little bit easier to use. Oh, come on. Well, I'll be using the editor to edit this bit out. Or not. Come on, let's do it. All right, here we are, here we are. Little bit, little bit of a uh, munted attempt right there, but uh, I think we'll be okay. Well, that's all four Torx screws exposed. Hopefully they're all the bloody same length. That's two, and that's on the floor, gone forever. Oh, come on. I wanna find, there it is. Okay, that's good. So far they're the same length. I'm a little bit out of sorts. I haven't done a teardown video in ages. Come on. A little bit of the adhesive is stuck, stopping the screw getting out. Oops. A little bit more manipulation right there. There we are. And we've got two left in the center, and that should release us from the top and bottom cover without too much hassle. Now 
Atlas. It's got 30 molded in clips around the periphery, but we don't know. Okay, all the screws are the same length. So take that to note. All right, things have definitely loosened up. And we don't quite have it. Oh, here we are. Hey, well, there's an 18650 cell. Well, there's your, the battery that runs in this thing. Well, that's all it is. Okay. Okay, you can probably just see that in there. Looks, it appears to be a little JST type connector. But I don't want to force that. There we go. And the 18650 rechargeable lithium-ion battery, and it is rated at 2,600 milliamp hours, or 9.6 watt hours. So just bear with me a tick. I'm just lifting this up so it faces onto the camera so you can see it. So that gives you an idea of the inside of the unit. There's a couple of chipsets around here. This is the back of the encoder. And that seems to be another board. Oh yeah, it's just a separate keyboard. All joined up by uh, small flat flex connectors. A little tiny IC there. That's probably the USB-C, uh, USB IC right there. So we know the back's off. We want to take the, the whole keyboard carriage out. I believe it does seem to be um, all in this metal frame here and it's all sort of mounted off that. But I'd imagine the optical encoder here um, would be a fixed shaft unit and this dial would come off. So what I might do, uh, I know that this rubber actually should just come off because it's just a, yeah, look. So that's a band that should just pop off. Oh, I just noticed that um, it's actually got a, a button feel to it. I don't know whether it does have an active button in it or not. I don't know why it would have, but anywho. And we do have a little hole on the side here, which I believe does appear to be a screw. What type of screw is that? I'm not sure. Let's have a closer look here. Let's see if we can get you to see down there. Does appear to be a screw there. Now, slightly off axis, so I can see down there. Yeah, mate, it does appear to be another um, another Torx bit, or at least the Allen head. I'm not too sure, but uh, I'll just pause the camera and uh, I'll have a look. Oh, yeah, that fits. Let's see if I can back that off. Oh, too easy. There is the shaft that rotates the optical encoder on the inside, but is there a mechanical connection? Yes, I'd say there would be. So I would have to remove these three screws and then that whole assembly will come out with the carrier board, I'd imagine. So that's Philip's head. Seem to be M3 machine screws, countersunk. There we go, that assembly's just come away. Just like so. So it's actually a self-contained unit. There you go. Definitely optical encoder. So we can probably pop that out. And there we are. Not much to it, not much at all. Zero play, side play in that shaft there. So it's top quality gear. Beauty, so all the weight must be and is in the aluminium knob here. So that leaves us to undo all these other screws. You can see there's a fairly hefty steel plate and it does look to be um, carrying all the switches and whatnot, and I think once we undo all those screws, the whole uh, keyboard and um, subframe will come out and we can have a look from the other side. Okay, I've just got my cheap, nasty calipers here. 1.4, I'm 
pretty sure that's zero, yep. 1.3, 1.4 mil uh, steel chassis there. There you go. Now, I'm not sure if I actually recorded that last bit where I pulled the key off. I'm going to do it again anyway because I don't think I was recording. You can see there's the cross type spigot that the, uh, the key just presses onto. So it comes off fairly easy. So there you go. Some of these keys, actually most of these keys have an LED in them. When you first plug this unit in, it doesn't work nothing happens no lights no nothing it's not until you in install the software and then the software recognizes what this is and then basically turns it on and gets rid of the function there's some sort of switch down here some sort of button it's probably a mode select or reset or something or other i don't know but um, it does have bluetooth cap capability now if you can just see just in there you can see the hint of a bluetooth module and that is what gives us our bluetooth capability but apart from that, the other side of the board is just the switches for the, the keys. Now, I don't know, I don't think there's any reason to tear this down any further, but at least it gives you insight on how this unit actually is put together. Um, that there is an STM32, so it's a microcontroller. And we have a battery charge controller here, which I imagine is close to the battery for this unit here, so that keeps looking after, that looks after the charge and control and condition of the battery. This IC here is the USB controller, uh, STM32 sitting in right here. And I'm not sure what this guy is here, unless it's just some localized power uh, regulation, but I cannot see a inductor, at least on this side of the board. Well, I doubt it would be on the other side of the board where the key, the key um, mechanisms are, but um, it could be some other sort of switching or multiplexing given the size of this keyboard. So it's probably a multiplexer of some sort. It does have a lot of extra lines running towards it into this point, uh, which is coming from keys, different switches and stuff. So I would suggest that there's sand or some sort of uh, IO expander for the rest of the keys, seeing as this is only a uh, run of the mill STM32, but at a guess, but it seems to be a reasonable assumption. So uh, yeah, that's the teardown. And uh, I'm quite impressed with the build quality of this kit. Well, it's not really a kit, but this uh, device. And um, basically they're giving these away with, with copies of DaVinci Resolve Studio um, 17. So I am keen as hell to um, get this footage onto the PC and start editing it and putting it together. Hopefully I can string together a half cohesive uh, video and um, hope you enjoyed watching. See you in the next one. <laughs>